Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hull. I'm delighted again to be able to speak to CEO Mark Smithson and CFO Josh Egan of Mark's Electrical, a fast-growing online retailer of household appliances such as kitchens, sorry, such as cookers, dishwashers, fridges, freezers, and uh, all kinds of electrical items. So welcome, Hello, gents. Paul, vacuum cleaners. And vacuum cleaners as well. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, there's been lots happening since we last spoke, not least today's um, excellent first half results with revenues up 15% to uh, £43.1 million pounds, compared to the market down 10%, significant market share gains there. So maybe you can start at the top, Mark, and just take us through what's been driving that terrific um, top line growth in terms of product categories and geographical expansion. Hi, Paul. Yeah, hard work in particular, as per normal. <laughs> you know, that's always quite a standard ingredient for success, isn't it? But buying the right product. So we started off, we've got, still got a bit of a legacy issue, some of the wrong stock when we went into H1 to April. Um, for example, some tumble drives that we'd ordered earlier in the season turned up late. You know, when you, everybody was buying whatever they could get their hands on. And a lot of companies ended up with a legacy issue. We've seen a lot of e-commerce players in particular just buying anything. And then you end up with a massive issue. I mean, luckily, we were quite um, measured in how we did our buying. But we still had a few issues and things we bought wrong. Um, we had to clear that out quickly. So the first quarter of H1 wasn't as good as it probably could have been. Um, but anyway, we dealt with that and we've moved on and we're now flying again. Um, so the second half of, the, of H1 was really good. Um, in particular, um, August and September and uh, October, we're really flying now. But so, oh. some of the wrong products. Um, well, if you're selling the wrong products and you did 15%, well, some of them are doing, well, obviously, you're, some of them are really selling through. What about sort of, I mean, with the cost of living crisis, what about sort of the energy efficiency type products? Yeah, because, um, I mean, if. Yeah, we've seen a polarization for, in particular, so either people trading down or thinking, you know what, we won't go on holiday and we'll buy a more energy efficient, um, for example, Miele tumble dryer, a, a heat pump dryer. You know, it might be a lot more expensive, but it's going to save you a lot of money with the uh, the cost of the cost of living crisis and the expense of electricity bills. So, you know, you've, we've definitely seen a polarisation. So the middle market's probably a bit flat, but the increase has definitely been in um, high-end premium product, which is what we specialise in selling. Mm. And is that because you sort of the demographic you, you sell to, sort of like you just say, are, are yeah. sort of, they, they've, they've got their sort of like eye on a, on a really nice cooker and um, want to basically buy that regardless? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, cooking's been a, a strong increase. I mean, but there's not really a massive difference in costs in, in uh, different cookers at the minute, Paul, in mm. electricity usage, but it's more in the case of tumble dryers, dishwashers, washing yeah. machines and fridge freezers. So that's where you see the big differentiation in um, cheaper electricity bills by more energy-efficient products. Mm. And how's the um, UK expansion been going? Because obviously that's that was the big sort of one of the big growth opportunities, increasing your footprint across the relevant regions and um, increasing your brand recognition. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're slowly expanding. I and mean, we cover all of England and all of Wales already, as you know now, and we're moving to Scotland. Um, we don't actually spend any money on advertising in Scotland yet, um, and we've seen some nice steady growth there. Um, but what we have done is um, brought in the installation of built-in products, um, and that is slowly. We started off just in the Midlands. We used to deal with a 3PL, third-party logistics and installation company. Um, we just thought we could do a better job. Well, we knew we could do a better job, but, you know, it's not always that easy setting this sort of um, offering up. In fact, I'll say the opposite. It's very difficult because you need gas fitters, electricians, but we've we've done that. We've got a lot of a lot of those guys working for us now. Um, and we're expanding that footprint from the Midlands we were just doing. And now we're doing um, all the way from Harrogate down to Exeter. Not quite next day, but you know, we're doing a, a, a massive probably 90% of the uh, uh, population of England we're doing um, with our inst new installation uh, offering. So just on that new insulation, I mean, that sounds like, I mean, just I'm putting just my sort of consumer head on here. I know my wife wants to sort of change out some appliances. So if I wanted to sort of like a, you know, I don't know, a range gas cooker or something with a dishwasher and that kind of stuff, your guys would come in there and basically install it for me now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had a few people, I've noticed on some of the orders, but we've actually done, 
you know, an integrated fridge freezer, dishwasher, range cooker, and then even an oven and a um, and a warming drawer as well, you know, which is quite surprising. So they've actually had the kitchen fitted and we've come along and fitted the appliances. I mean, wow. I know, but generally speaking, it's the replacement market, which is, you know, where we, we're really majoring. So we really want to get that offer. I mean, we're, we're fully booked up for a week now. Um, you know, quite interesting. We switched on. I'm not surprised because, I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, the way we do it essentially is usually we buy a, you know, maybe a dishwasher or not even a, sorry, a dishwasher, a, 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 um, a washing machine, something like that. And then we get the local firm to come and fit it. So if we've got you guys to come in and do it all in one, then that uh, saves us a lot of time and effort. It's the name of the game. When it's integrated, you know, there's, it's a really tricky thing to do. Yes, you can do it. Obviously, a gas product you can't do. Um, but I mean, a lot of people could fit a, bu- a built under fridge. It's not that difficult or a dishwasher, but it's, you know, it could be a two or three hour job. And then you've got to get the old one out, take the old one away, all the packaging, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and if there's a problem with it, you, it's probably it's the guy who's fitted it, you yourself. But when mm. we come and do it, you know, it's all down to us. It's all our problem. He pays £120. We do the whole lot. If there's an issue, we've got to sort it. So mm. a lot of people are taking that, that offering up, which is great. So no discount, um, charge for the installation, and you see great sales growth. People just want great service, don't they? And that was a yeah. Part. No, hey, right. Well, I'm glad <laughs> you can add us to the list then of customers. Hey, Josh, just turn into your, the, the numbers. Now, obviously, we've knocked the ball out of the park on the top line. Um, and the margins actually are holding up pretty well, given what you said before in terms of quite a competitive environment, sort of down trading and advertising and that kind of stuff. And, and in fact, I think the margins EBITDA came in just a bit touch higher than 6% in the first half, which is double what your major competitors are doing, because I think AO is on less than 3%. And I think Curry's actually is about 2.5%. So absolutely you know really really good can you take us through that you know sort of the margins and the and the cash generation in the first half yeah thanks paul so um as as you said the margin was a a little bit softer than than where it was in the prior year and we we flagged that quite well because we knew all Mm. of all of the cost headwinds that were coming towards us you know be it be it the energy costs the, the increased fuel bill of course the national insurance increase there was quite a few things that were outside of our control um, as Mark mentioned in the first quarter of the first half, that, that, was, that was a challenge from a discounting perspective. We saw it very expensive for online advertising. We also saw a lot of competitive discounting, so that impacts the gross margin. But that eased quite a lot in the second half, um, you know, going into August, September. And, and as Mark mentioned, you know, we've, we've just done October with zero discounting. We've had excellent sales and the margins come in through really nicely now. So, um, yeah, we, we tried to keep, a, you know, keep a lid on the cost control in the first half to, to, to really, you know, make sure that we continue to deliver that, that differentiated margin, as you say. And has, is that differentiated margin, is that your sort of intrinsic cost structure, which is so much better than the competition that's driving it? Yeah, I mean, from a gross margin perspective, post-delivery, I think most of us will make make similar values. You know, yeah, that's right, about 19%, terms. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we're all about the same there. Marketing, we're probably spending a little bit more because we're not as well known. So we're spending around five, five and a half percent on marketing. Um, and really, it comes down to the overheads. You know, we have a very lean organization. We're, we're really, really focused on the productivity of the team members. Um, we pay well. You know, we do pay well in terms of um, in terms of customer service, sales, um, drivers. Um, so we pay well in terms of uh, market rates. Um, but we just we just keep a lid because of our centralised distribution centre, Paul. That is really, really important. We don't have a hub and spoke model. We just have a hub and it really keeps the cost down. Mm-hmm. Great. And then just, just Mark, you, you touched on it. You've had a good, strong October. Now, that is just incredible considering what the UK has just been through with Liz Trust and the, the sort of, you know, what's happening with the level of uncertainty, plus with the, the higher utility costs. Can you just take us through... Is it is it the installation which is driving that? Is it you know your oh, new new offer? Is it your, is it the product structure you're going to carry on, Paul? That's what it is. You know, you, if you've got a good business with the right model, um, and this was all set up, it's set up professionally and all in the right manner. And it's just about leveraging now that that investment and all that over over the years, which is what the investors will now benefit from. So. You know, get buying the right products. We've got new buyers arrive, which are great. So we've got a buying team of sort of about five of us now. 
and we discuss things quite in depth. We don't just charge in and, and buy the wrong products. It's all measured. So buying the right products, understanding the market, not selling lawnmowers, albeit never say we'll never say we'll never do it, um, but not you know garden furniture, kitchens, and uh, um, sheds, etc. We just focus on TV and MDA. Um, and then we've introduced the IT category as well, which is very slow burn at the moment. And so, so heading into Christmas, what are you buying then, Mark? I mean, as in like, if you to see that sort of, is, is, it, is it again just energy efficiency, tellies for the World Cup? And, um... Yeah, well, yeah, and focusing on, on, you know, the right ranges, Paul. So knowing what, you know, not going after everything, but picking the, the right product mm. for the, each brand's um, offering, you know, the right American fridge freezers, not every single one they do but focus in on, on the right ones and get the right depth of stock coming in and get the balance coming in. Stock. We've got so much stock piling in. We've, um, you know, I think we've, we'll start the uh, traffic jam on the M1, I think, the amount of lorries coming into our warehouse. So <laughs> if anyone tells us there's a problem with stock, well, we've got plenty. So, so if, you've got, if you've got plenty, Josh, just how did you generate so much cash in the first half? It seemed to be coming out your working capital. I mean, you know, you went from, I can't remember what you were, just over 3 million of, of sort of net cash in, um, in March to, or the end of March, to 7.7 at the end of September. We won the yeah, last sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we managed to keep inventory um, pretty, pretty steady, actually. So we were 14 million at the end of March and we were roughly 14 million at the end of September. Mm. We improved credit lines with, with suppliers. So we improved credit terms uh, across the board. And um, we just manage cash flow flow tightly and, and sensibly, and keeping that inventory flat whilst whilst improving you know the inventory turn because the sales went up has really helped drive drive the cash flow quite nicely, Paul, in the first half. Mm. And that buy now pay later type of offer, which seems to be, I think it's about ten or twelve percent now of your sort of like you know your turnover, etc. How does that work in terms of your cash flow? Do you get the money up front, do you, and then they take a clip or something of the of the sales price? Exactly right, Paul. Exactly okay. right. So we have we have Klarna, ClearPay, V12, and we do PayPal credit as well. So we have those offerings for the customers. You know, it's, all of them have have a different kind of demographic to, depending on what the customer's purchasing, and and we receive the cash the, basically the following day usually, mm. uh, and then they take a, a small percentage of the sales. But um, yeah, that's it's all off balance sheet, and that's how we prefer it. Yeah, good. And then, Mark, just in terms of sort of building the um, sort of the brand loyalty. I mean, I did notice in in the slides that you're now up to twenty six percent of revenues from repeat customers, and, and I and I can understand that if you if you're putting an installation layer on, because I'm coming back, I can tell you. Um, but um, but that is actually still less than somebody a bit you know a more mature business like AO World. We're on about fifty five percent. Is that going to be another sort of growth driver going forward? Is just yeah. sort of like you know adding to your new adding the new customers, but but maximizing the share of wallet of your existing ones. Yeah, yeah, no, that is a fact, Paul. But I mean, we're not going to increase our actual spend on marketing, um, but we're getting a lot of contributions from the manufacturers, so we can increase it. But we're still not going to spend more than five percent of revenue. So we're getting mm. inflow from suppliers, realizing they need to back the winners in the market. You see a lot of our competition flailing, like John Lewis. Um, yeah. You know, and that's where, I've come, that's where our customers come from. And it's great. You know, they, they want to spend a lot of money. We've got one of the highest average order values um, because we sell premium product, but we don't neglect the people who only want to buy a, a 200 pound Beco washing machine. We still stop them. They still get the same great service. We don't give them a, a, a C rated service because they've not spent a thousand pounds. They get exactly the same service. Mm. Great. And on the operational side, Josh, in terms of sort of the, I know you've done some sort of like, um, you've done 24-7 on your um, on your warehousing operation. Do you want to take us through that to sort of maintain that level of efficiency? Particularly, I suppose, you want high productivity over this really busy Christmas period. Yeah, so we operate a four on four a shift pattern mm. both across the drivers and the warehouse. Obviously, the, you know, a, a four day working week is preferred for a lot of people now. So that works really well. Um, so uh, in the warehouse, we installed that this year, Paul. We are 24-7, so we, we have basically four shifts, you know, two that do days, two that do nights. 
uh, and we rotate it quite nicely. So it means that we're, we're always, you know, putting the volume through 24 seven during the peak period. We, we, we will hire some additional people because of the growth of the business. Mm. We're in a fortunate place where a lot of those temporary staff that we might bring in will, will probably lead into permanent roles in the new year. It's what we did last year and it, it actually worked really nicely for us. Good. And then just, just on that, um, on the advertising, how are you seeing that in terms of, sort of like the cost of sort of digital advertising? Because, I mean, Facebook came out with some <clears throat> its results a couple of weeks back, which were actually quite poor. And one of the big sort of like uh, sort of, you know, takeaways for investors is their pricing is down 18% on a cost per click. Are you seeing that coming through at all? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Facebook in particular, we pulled back from Facebook, Paul, because we just mm. weren't seeing the returns that we needed on Facebook, but across mm. Google and, and, and Microsoft Bing. Um, we're not seeing a, a, a drastic reduction in the cost per click because actually, given the competitiveness in the market, we're seeing mm. quite strong competitive behavior, which drives the cost per click up. That mm. being said, we're, we're really being careful to keep a lid on that spend and then try and distribute that spend across other things. So, for example, this month, we've got quite a lot of um, uh, out of home advertising going on in and around London. You know, we've got tubes, we've got bus displays. Um, we've got telephone boxes in central London. Yeah. Um, so we're really trying to get the name out there and get the brand out there. We've got TV campaigns as well. So just making sure that you're not solely concentrating on your digital marketing and you're just doing a little bit of everything to try and drive that brand awareness. Yeah, well, I thought London will be a, a really big sort of like opportunity for you, isn't it, I guess? It's, 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 yeah. And then just on that market share, Mark, in terms of, I did notice the, I mean, your your market share for the online has gone from um, in 20, uh, 2021 went from 1.5%. Last year, it was at 2.6%. And then 12 months later, now we're at 3.9%. So, I mean, you, you're not, I mean, that's telling me you're not only winning market share across the whole MDA market in physical store and online, but actually you're, you're knocking the ball out of the park in terms of your specific online competition as well. Well, if you've got the best operation in the country and the best offering, mm. sorry, not the best operation, the best offering, um, you know, customers will come, you know, they'll migrate to you, won't they? And also, so will your suppliers. You know, they're all, you know, we've got them in, in droves coming in, the, the head hon shows of all the brands now, which is great. You know, mm. they realise we are a, a, a great alternative to the traditional big players. And, it, and it's great. You know, AO came along and broke the mould and, and now and we're looking to do the same. You know, mm. the market is migrating towards online. You know, people like buying this type of product online. It's a nice, easy thing to buy. And if you give the best service, you know, it's it, so we're giving the, the corner shop sort of service where, you know, you can walk in there and pick the Miele integrated dishwasher and have it installed the next day. You know, mm. that's what people want. And once you're at that sort of level, why would people not buy off you? The yeah. reason they wouldn't is because they haven't heard of us. Mm. So it's almost like um, we're going through, the, you know, a, t a tough patch, and the and actually it's the stronger getting stronger here. You, you, you're winning more market share than in a tougher environment than than, than you'd perhaps even you'd expected in a an easier sort of like backdrop. Yeah, well, the, you know, we dig deeper. You know, we don't go and play golf every day. You know, we get stuck <laughs> in. We, it's twenty four seven for yeah, yeah. yourself, and that cascades down throughout the rest of the team. You know, and, and they only work 300 hours a week. Mm. Good. <laughs> no, it's, all, it's all about Paul, isn't it? You know, you work hard doing what you're doing, and we're the same. I think, I think, I think, I think I think I don't work as bad as, as hard as you guys. Now, just on the, um, it would take us through the the outlook, Josh, along with the the dividend, because you 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 put in a maiden interim dividend as well, haven't you? I mean, you're generating so much cash. It's uh, it's a, it's you know, an excellent uh, you know thing to do. Yeah, thanks, Paul. So, I mean, we finished September with 7.7 .7 million, and that was after our our maiden final dividend was last mm. year. Um, so, we you know we were very happy with that cash performance, even paying the dividend. Uh, we've announced today an interim dividend for FY23 of 0.3p, mm. um, and that will be paid in a, in around December. Um, and then, in terms of outlook. You know, we've reconfirmed guidance uh, in our trading statement today. We've talked about how we've had a very strong October and we've seen a good start to November. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're feeling comfortable um, about our guidance that's out there. Mm. Um, and, uh, and and that's why we're paying the dividend. Excellent. I mean, I will just highlight to investors that the uh, 
two sort of closest brokers, um, Berenberg and um, uh, Panmore Gordon, have a target price of 120p. And I think the shares are just south of about 70p at the moment. So significant upside. And I would say, just as a, <clears throat> an investor myself, in terms of you know the shares are currently trading at sort of like a less than a, a half or 0.5 uh, peg ratio, and if you just put a sensible one times peg ratio, I mean that that doubles the share price. So you know you're looking at a significant um, opportunity. In fact, I would say the shares are at doorbuster levels of, uh, of what of what your 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 product oh. offering is. So uh, oh, when we floated, you know, it was one pound ten. We had no. You know, installation and built-in products, gas. We had no gas and electrical engineers. And mm. now we have the, the share price almost half, and we've got all this, and we've proven ourselves. It's like today is it's the fifth of no tomorrow, fifth of November. So mm. it's a year tomorrow that's our you know our anniversary for, on yeah. the market. So yeah. Anyone investing in our company now is getting a way better deal by a country mile than they did when we floated. But mm. we'll, we'll be up past those levels soon. It won't yeah. take long. Yeah, well, you've got that long-term vision, haven't you, Mark? I know he's, with the 10%. Sure, well, ten, well, medium to like, you're hoping to get, you're intending to get to sort of market share, aren't you, of, of yeah. 10%. And if, yeah. if you hit that and if you run the numbers, then just from, again, putting my investor hat on, you get well over £3.50. In fact, you get nearer yeah. sort of like £4, £5. So um, yeah. it's significant upside opportunity there. Yeah, an organically grown business, not by acquisition. Yeah. Good. And then just finally then, Josh, news flow going forward. So we've got the obviously the interims today. Have we got, will, will we have a Christmas trading update probably beginning of January or maybe? Exactly right, Paul. Yeah, we'll do a trading update at the beginning of January. We'll do, um, we'll do a pre-close trading update uh, in early April. Uh, and then we're on to the full year results in, in around July. Great. Okay. Well, thanks very much for your time. And as I say, just repeat to, to investors, I mean, for a company to uh, significantly outperform the market by sort of 25%, if it's down, if the market's down 10% and you're up 15%, that means it's incredible at top line and to deliver double the level of profitability and significant cash flow. It's a, it's a credit to the actual whole of the, uh, the Mark's electrical team. So uh, well done, gents, and uh, look forward to chatting uh, going forward. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Pretty much Thanks, appreciated. Paul.